Well, hi, Midland ISD. Um, hope you had a great weekend, and we're back to Monday, um, moving forward with some uh, information on things that are going on in our district. Uh, right now, I'm going to give everyone a chance to join in, for those of uh, y'all who are um, joining in. Um, I want to, first of all, give a shout out around our um, our profile picture. If you've noticed, we are staying home and staying healthy. Um, and so that's what our profile picture is promoting. Um, we want to encourage you, if you would like to include this uh, a frame such as this on your profile picture for your Facebook page, um, you can uh, add the link. It's right on our page and you can also find it at facebook.com slash profiled pick frames. So a couple things that we do want to highlight um, before we get started, do want to um, invite you to put your comments into our section and then as we go through we can answer some of those questions you might have as we go through today. So today started, I'm going to look at our notes here, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, we started phase three of our Google Class, or of our academic plan. This involves us moving towards Google Classroom. And so what this means is that we are bringing your teacher to you virtually. And I know that's something that our, our teachers are excited to have their students back in some shape or form and uh, virtually right now is how we are doing it. And um, Google Classroom will give your students opportunity to interact with some of their classmates, with their teacher, and uh, just stay plugged in in that, in that regard, in that learning. Um, and so this is what we're moving towards now through Google Classroom, through that platform. We realize this includes a number of um, technology resources. And so what we have in place this right now at this point in time is on our campuses and your principals will be communicating this out to you each campus has a different plan um, we are going to be checking out devices on a, a needs basis for families that still need to have access to that information and access to a device in order to stay plugged into Google Classroom we want to make sure that you're able to have that um, all that feedback there so that's one way to do that and so we ask you to remain aware of those phone calls that your principals are putting out um, and that they are um, sharing. With that though, we have to be really careful with the way that we are um, congregating. And so we have this, uh, this week three is, or this phase three is what we call a soft rollout. So we realize not every student today is going to have the device they need today to get the work done today. We realize that. So we're going to move forward in an asynchronous manner. Um, so we'll give a chance for our uh, families to come up on, based upon the schedules that their principals have been promoting and have been sharing with them. Because uh, we do need to stay safe. We do need to uh, make sure that we have that um, that physical distancing is still in place. And so each campus, theirs looks different as far as their plan. So your principals, if they have not already, um, they will be in contact with you. We had a number of devices checked out today. Um, and so those are coming so that your students can stay in play with that. We want to uh, emphasize, though, what we're doing is um, remaining committed to our academic plan to support learning in a new non-normal situation. And so again, I'm going to emphasize the fact that it's, it's learning that we're focused on at this point. With that, we're not going to penalize students for not mastering concepts at the same pace, the same time as their peers due to inequities in learning environments. So whereas when we're in school, uh, we all have we're all in that same physical location and to a degree we can provide some consistencies in that way. Well now we're all in the situation where we all have different situations and so we want to make sure that we are providing support not penalizing people for for situations that are different in every single circumstance. Um, so we realize that there's a number number of things um, familiar familiarity with our technology, internet access, um, and things of that nature. 
Um, so we want to make sure that we're not punitive here. It's coming from a system of support. We are grateful to you parents. I know this has put you in a situation of not only being parents, but also being teachers um, to, to some degree. And so this next, um, this next phase will hopefully provide more support in that regard. And that's, that's, our, that's our goal here. Um, so we are grateful to our parents for working together with our teachers uh, and with students to make sure that learning is occurring to the greatest extent possible in your homes. We know this is not easy. We know that um, it's, it's putting us all in kind of a, a new learning situation. And so we wanna make sure that we are providing that support through Google Classroom um, in that regards. So thank you all for working together with your students um, on that. And we will continue to be able to provide support through Google Classroom. Um, we want to also highlight the fact that midlandisd.net slash at home learning, it's your connection point to access Google Classroom and other resources. I noticed a couple things coming through the feed just right there. Um, you know, you're like, well, I ha where, how do I get in touch with my, uh, how do I get further information on this? Please go to that website. That will be a place for you to access some of that. So midlandisd.net slash at home learning is the connection for that. I know a couple of us have gotten accustomed to the packet pickups at lunches um, from our earlier phases. Well, now we're going to a much more um, individualized and I guess classroom-based approach. And so each student's teacher has a little bit of a different sort of thing for them, or each, each campus will have a little bit of different sort of situation. So we ask that you, um, moving forward, uh, you get in touch with your child's teacher. We're all still working. We're all still checking our emails. So please email your teacher if there are further supports that you need um, so that you can receive any further materials that you might um, have, have need for. We want to be available for those responses and, and responsive to those requests. And so we want to make sure that it's individualized to your student. Um, and so please make sure that you get in touch with your child's teacher should any further uh, resources be needed and necessary at this point. Also taking consideration, we're moving forward with, um, with, with, the, with Google Classroom so that you've got that access. Looking through here, we've got... There have been questions also about internet service. Um, internet service for, um, you know, a number of people said, well, we have devices, but we don't have really a, a great internet service. We do want you to make you aware that you have um, some options on our website that we put on the COVID-19 resources section of our website. Um, a 60-day internet service um, that could, that's uh, reduced in price. Um, so those are listed on our website under the COVID-19 resources section. Please, we invite you to check that out. Um, and if you need further uh, support navigating that, we'll be happy to help you with that. We've had a que some questions about throughout our feeds um, prior to today, uh, questions about enrollments and withdrawals. Lots of questions about those, so we want to make sure that we're addressing those. Um, so we continue to enroll and withdraw students for this current school year. During our campus closure, I want to talk to you a little bit about what that process looks like as I'm going to scroll through here. So to do that, to do, you're going to go to midlandisd.net. From there, go to parents and students and then you will find a section called enrollment. And if you want the exact page, it's midlandisd.net slash page slash 33396. If you're unable to complete that enrollment online, um, please uh, be aware that we do have paper enrollment packets available for pickup at Central Office every Wednesday between 11 and 1 or between 3 and 5. So I'll repeat that because I think some people are asking some questions about that. So paper packets, if you are not able to access online, which would be the preferred way. We want to make sure we're, we're safe and we're social distancing. Um, those paper packets 
for enrollment purposes um, will be available at Central Office every Wednesday between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. or 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. The method that we're going to do this is going to be through a drive-through situation. So you need to drop off the completed packets at Central Office during the, that designate, designated time. The staff will be able to assist you, um, so there's no need for you to exit your vehicle or have to come into the building. It's only if you are needing, uh, you don't have access online, uh, but we do appreciate all the help that you are um, providing in this COVID situation on that social distancing. Questions about withdrawals. People have been asking about that. Um, if you need to withdraw your student, you will be contacting your child's campus. Um, online registration for next year it, and returning students opens on April 13th. So that's online registration. Now, there's been some questions about that. How do we register for next year? For um, new and returning students, that opens up April 13th. For pre-K students, we've had a lot of questions about pre-K. Uh, for our pre-K students, the Early Childhood Department will start passing out those enrollment documents and setting processing dates when school resumes or when those uh, social distancing requirements are lifted. If you have specific questions regarding pre-K, and I know there's a, a, a number of those, um, please feel free to email Kathy Pearson she is in charge of our, our um, early childhood, and her email is Kathy, K-A-T-H-Y dot Pearson, P-E-A-R-S-O-N, at MidlandISD.net. So I'm going to go through a couple of our questions here. So I'm going to go through the feed right here. Um, let's see, a couple things. All right, so questions like, it, I see a number of people have, okay, questions like, so what if my, my child's teacher no longer works there at that, at that campus? Please get in touch with your child, with your campus administrators. And um, those campus administrators will be in touch about on how that's going to, to work out. So in those situations where that, that parent or that that um, teacher is no longer here, then please make sure that you're uh, reaching out to your campus administrators, and we also will make sure that we're looking at that and noting that um, to address that that concern if that teacher is no longer here, um, and that's and that's the situation. So we can certainly do that. So you don't have technology at home for your students. Um, yes, please uh, contact your campus administrators because they will be setting up some um, opportunities for you to come and collect some devices. Um, and that's going to be on a, a needs basis uh, depending upon that. We realize that we, a number of people don't have devices. If we move to Google, as we move to Google Classroom, we want to make sure that everybody is getting that same information. So please be in touch with your campus administrators. They're responsive to questions. They're wanting to make sure that we're reaching out to students and getting everybody what they need. Um, like I said, because it is a soft rollout and we do have to do this in a staggered fashion, um, it's not going to be everybody coming up to the campus all at once. It's going to have to be in a staggered fashion. So each of them have been working very carefully to make sure that we're moving forward in a safe manner. Okay. All right, trying to see if others. Okay. And again, any specific questions or concerns you might have about not getting in touch with a, a teacher or you, again, please be in touch with that principal. They are listening, on, they are on their uh, emails constantly, so please be, on, be in touch with them, uh, with them or their, their counselor as well. Um, they are definitely in, in play. 
Yes, I understand. People are talking about, okay, my device is for me at work. I realize, okay, my device right now is for me here at work. What if my child doesn't have a device? Please um, take advantage of those opportunities uh, as your principals, and they, they may not have made the call yet, but just be aware that it will be coming um, when for parents to come up and work on some questions about um, those sorts of situations. All right, so we have a couple questions about grading. All right, so I want to, we're in a really interesting situation at this point in time. Um, moving towards a traditional grading situation is, um, I know, something that people have been asking about. How do grades work? we're going to not uh, be moving towards conventional grades during closure. However, we are not dismissing what the students have done prior to closure. Those are in still place. Those quantitative measures are still in place there. But the question now becomes, what happens at, during closure? How are, we holding, how are we keeping kids in play at this point in time? So what we will be having and what you'll be seeing is that your teachers through Google Classroom, this provides an online platform for them to engage with their teacher and with their peers um, through this virtual format. Um, feedback, we know, is what we give to students as we move towards a quantifiable grade, our traditional grades. We are now in a situation where we have some inequities across our, our district. With 27,000 students, everybody has got a different situation and everybody's got, uh, is, is working through some, some other things. So what we do not want to do, we want to continue learning, supporting learning. But what we do not want to do is put a penalty on students who are in families that are working through a very... Um, interesting situation in the very best way possible. We were going to provide feedback and we're also going to progress monitor and we'll have more about that in coming weeks because we're still working on those those conversations and we want to share out some solid information with you in the coming um, coming up soon. But progress monitoring is what's going to give us an understanding of how our students are moving forward. So as you're getting these Google Classrooms, uh, you're getting your students set up in Google Classroom, I know this week is going to be a learning week. We're going to have to figure out, as a, our families are going to have to sit down and work through what that looks like. I've been working with my child on getting him into Google Classroom and what that looks like, and he's, uh, you know, learning through some new things right now. So learning about how to use the technology is the first part. Then how are we going to utilize this technology on... Um, to, to move forward in that way, that's what the next the next step is going to be. So progress monitoring is what we're going to be working with our teachers to towards doing um, as we're moving forward with Google Classroom. And we'll have more information on how what that looks like because I know you as parents want to know, well, is my student mastering the concept? Is he not mastering the concept? How is that happening? And so, yes, all definitely valid questions, and as a parent, one would want to know the same. So we are going, we're still working to make sure that that language is solid, that that is, under, that is all understood throughout our district, and then we're going to share that through, through this uh, with, with our parents. Looking again through our feed to make sure um, where those are. Yes, okay. You know, people are saying there are some campuses that we're having trouble getting in touch with. Yes, and Midland ISD says, please let us know what those campuses are. We want to know. So if we don't know the campuses, we won't, we won't know. So please share that information, um, and we will certainly have those, those questions addressed. Okay, so in regards to UIL, we have questions about UIL. Right now, we have, we're following with what UIL is, they, they are currently closed right now. Does the district support UIL? Yes, we support UIL, but we are making sure that we're gonna move forward and reopen once um, we, UIL reopens once, the, once we have further directions from um, TEA in that regards, from Governor Abbott. Um, when school reopens at this point, we cannot open before May 4th. Um, and then UIL will also be something that will be uh, reinstated based upon the situation that's going on. Absolutely. Okay, 
looking back through our feed. Okay. So a couple things that I came to realize as a parent, you know, in Google Classroom. Um, so my son was going through, someone Someone was asking about, um, so why is it show up as a grade for in, in Google Classroom? Um, there are some of those situations where it does, um, so assignment completed and it makes it look like that, that it's intended to be graded into the traditional sense. Google Classroom was uh, is, is a platform that can be used in that in that regard. We're using it as in progress monitoring and feedback in this case. Um, so, okay. okay, let's see. Okay, so questions about uh, Google Classroom. Uh, please, again, I'm going to reiterate the um, at-home learning, that site, midlandisd.net slash at-home learning. It's a connection point to access Google Classroom and other resources. If um, you're not able to get in, if, if you're still having difficulty getting in touch with your child's teacher, please uh, make sure that um, you reach out to the campus. Uh, but if you're still having difficulty with that, please let us know. Um, you can, we can certainly work through that together. Right, so in regards to grades, our grades prior to closure, those, we have those grades. Those are being graded, those are grades in the traditional sense. What we're moving towards is progress monitoring our students um, and providing feedback. We're gonna have more information on how what that means for you as we move forward with this so as my student making progress in the class that's what we want to know when we are going to be providing that to you um, I'll be and I understand it is very confusing right now um, as far as what does this look like I've got my head around what grading looks like but now what is this progress monitoring information what is that all about so again it's making sure that our students are making progress to um, satisfy the uh, requirements of the course um, and the standards, not necessarily, not necessarily continuing on with an eight-hour day and things of that nature, but are they mastering the standards that the Texas Education Agency has put forth as their, Texas, their um, essential knowledge and skills for that particular course? That's what we're going to be progress monitoring, and that's what your teachers will be in, in touch with you on where, how they're making progress in mastering those essential standards there. Um, and I know people are really, really hungry for that information, like, well, what does that look like? If it's not in a grade, tell me what that looks like. We are working on finalizing that information, and we will be in touch with you just as soon as uh, we have that in place for you, because uh, we want to make sure that it is consistent, that it is all understood, and that it is, it's, uh, it's all, all ready for you to go. But those are, that information is coming really soon, because we understand you're hungry for that information. I would be as well. How do I know how my student is moving forward in this? Um, okay. Looking through a couple of other things. Okay. Yes, so there's a question about due dates. Well, we have due dates on when things are are going to be so that we can, so we have some sort of plan. Yes, teachers are going to be working to let people know, okay, in order to stay up with the um, progress of the class, what would be a feasible time? What needs to be done in the amount of time that you have? Like is this done is it must this assignment be done within a week? Is it recommended to be done within a week? Um, and with that, I will say we are having to make sure that we have opportunities for some flexibility around that. So yes, it can't be a situation where, you know, oh, I think I want to, as, me as a student, oh, I might as well, here it is, um, end of May, maybe I should check in on my Google Classroom. You know, that would not be missing a lot of uh, instruction at that point in time. So yes, our teachers will be putting in those recommended times for, okay, we, we need to have this in place by this time. I'm going to go and I'm circle back with my students and see, 
you know, how, how that went. That's part of progress monitoring and that's part of giving feedback. And if I, as a teacher, I see that my kid, this certain student hasn't gone and I'm going to call them and see what's going on. What's, where are you? What's, what's, what's the hold up and, and how are you moving forward with this? Okay, so I'm continuing to look through the feed. I want to make sure that I've addressed all the questions or the questions that um, have been lumped together there. Okay, yes. So, yeah, moving forward, make sure that you are um, listening out for information from your child's teachers and your child's campuses because they will be sharing those with you. We'll also continue to have our Facebook Lives on Wednesday at 4.30. It will be in Spanish. We'll be back together on Friday at 4.30 as well. Um, there are questions about um, graduation and things of that nature. One thing I want to tell you is we are coming, we, we hear you and what, um, you know, parents of seniors and seniors as well, what's happening with all of these plans, with these important plans. Um, we are going to be dedicating a section of our um, our website to the class of 2020 because there are specific things that they that we are wanting to communicate through that. So that is still it, that's on its way on being uploaded, and that information will be updated regularly. Um, that will be up very very soon and so I know that's one thing our executive directors and our secondary principals are working together to put that best information together for you because we have lots of questions about um, graduation what happens with that what happens with our caps and gowns what happens with with all of these sorts of things and so we want to be responsive to those questions please stay tuned to our um, to our, that section of our website that will be coming very very soon uh, because that will be a great resource for you to be able to continue to stay updated. And as we get new information and, and uh, new questions, we'll continue to be able to add that as well to that section um, to the class of 2020. I know this is for seniors. This is a, an, a different, very, very different than what you uh, had expected your, um, your, your senior year to look like. And so please know that we are working through some really creative solutions to really honor our seniors and the work that they've done. Um, and so that information will be added daily. So I'm trying to look through here, see if there's any other questions. I want to make sure that we've responded to those. Um, yes. All right. So as we move forward, things that you can expect to hear further more further about is how, what exactly does progress monitoring look like? At this point, I know as a parent, you're like, okay, I hear now that moving forward, we're doing progress monitoring and I'm getting feedback, but what does progress monitoring look like and how will I know that my student is making progress? That's information that will be forthcoming. We hear you, we understand that, and I, I understand the, the need for, for that. So that's something that will be coming out and we'll, we'll be sharing that with you. Um, also, again, seniors looking at that uh, section of our midlandisd.net slash seniors2020. More information is going to be added to that daily um, as we flush out what those, uh, what those activities are going to look like and how that will be impacting them. We appreciate you staying um, tuned in today um, for our session on face Facebook Live. Tomorrow at 9 a.m., um, I invite you to view the Unified Command staff briefing, um, and that's something that I, that gives you some good information from all of our county and um, health and local officials on COVID-19, as well as a message from Mr. Riddick on, um, from the school perspective as well. So we'll do that tomorrow on Tuesdays. Then Wednesdays, back to, we'll be in Spanish, Facebook Live, Thursday is another Unified Command Briefing at 9 a.m. And then Friday we'll have Facebook Live at 4.30. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for all you're doing. And thank you for your support as we move forward um, with these uh, unusual times. But together, we're going to be able to do the best for students. So thank you for partnering with us and working to the best we can for students. Y'all have a great afternoon.